today I'm going to be watching this video, it's called Reverse Culture Shocks Back From Down Under After Two Years and I thought this would be quite a good video to watch because I've actually just returned from a holiday to the UK, I live in Malaysia, I've been here for 13 years and even going back there for a couple of weeks, just I noticed so many stark differences between my life here, my life there, whether it's the people, the different personalities, even things like going to the supermarket, it's just a completely different experience. So interested to hear someone's experience of the difference between living in Australia and their home country. You can tell me what you think about that. If you've lived in a different country, I would love to hear your uh, experience and, and thoughts as well. Uh, let's watch this. Is this <laughs> I felt like, oh yeah, I'm back in Germany now. Ridiculous. Oh, Germany, yeah, I watched this video Boy, before. Really cool you. guy. That was the most devastating thing that I've realized. This is probably what I miss about New Zealand and Australia the most at the moment. Hello, my friends. It's been a while. As you can tell by the video title, yes, I'm back home in Germany. After traveling Australia and New Zealand for about two years, at long last, I'm, I'm finally back. A lot of you guys wrote some comments in some of my older videos. Oh, once you go back to Germany, you will be having culture shock or whatever. And yeah, now I finally get to do this video. And this is going to be very exciting. So I don't want to compare Germany to just Australia or just New Zealand. I kind of have one big experience from Australia and New Zealand, so I just kind of summarize that with Down Under. So in this video I would like to tell you the story of the very first day that I've had back here in Germany. As we proceed in the story and I tell you about my day, I will point out a few things that were quite surprising to me. So after a 28 hour long flight, that was kind of the first thing that I've so noticed flight. how incredibly far New Zealand and Australia are away from Germany, 28 hours, Jesus, and that was, that was like the quickest flight that you could find. I landed in Munich airport and my best friend picked me up from there, brought me home, and it was in the afternoon already, so that wasn't really my first day, I went to bed, I said hello to my family, which was really, really nice, very surprising to my mom, because she didn't know that I was coming, so essentially I, I went to bed, I mean, I was jet lagged, I just landed from a 28 hour flight. Then I woke up in the morning at about 4 a.m. So I didn't really know what to do, everyone was still asleep, so I just decided to take a walk to town, which is about a 20 minute walk from where my mom lives. And the first thing that I came across was a bakery. I noticed, and I have never noticed that before, that every single table outside that bakery had an ashtray on it. As I continued, I saw many bakeries, many cafes, many restaurants, and all of them that had an, an outside area, they would have ashtrays on every single table. Furthermore, I would notice that every public rubbish bin would have a, an ashtray integrated in them as well. So Germany is very, very friendly to smokers. When you go to a petrol station, there is a big wall of cigarettes behind the vendor. Everything a smoker's heart wants. There are even a few TVs running advertisements for cigarettes. Later that day, when the city was a bit more crowded, I would notice that at least every fourth or fifth person would have a cigarette in their hands. And that was really shocking to me. I've never noticed how many people would smoke in Germany. In Australia and New Zealand, Smoking is so incredibly expensive that just very, very few people smoke. So the anti-smoke politics of Australia and New Zealand by making tobacco just ridiculously expensive seems to be paying off. Because I didn't really see a lot of people smoke in Australia and New Zealand, where in Germany it seems to be the most normal thing. So yeah, that was a big shock for me when I realized how smoky Germany was. Well, I moved. That's an interesting point as well, and I guess that's actually maybe Australia is very similar to the UK in that respect. The UK are putting a lot of policies in place to basically ban smoking. They don't want anybody smoking due to, I guess, the health uh, health concerns that that brings. Is that something you've seen over your lifetime in Australia? Because I remember reacting to Australian commercials, adverts, and there used to be seemingly a lot of tobacco, cigarettes, uh, adverts, so obviously they were quite promoted maybe back in like the 80s and that sort of thing. Uh, but is it a more recent thing that people have started smoking less? I think even like the younger generation see it's not cool to smoke anymore. I think when I went back to the UK, more people were vaping than they were smoking cigarettes. 
do people vape in Australia? Is that more common? Do the younger generation just not do anything? I think it's definitely a good thing. I do know that more like mainland Europe still smoke a lot uh, compared to other places. But tell me what you think about that. Have you seen that change in your lifetime in Australia? Moved on and I arrived at a crossing with lights, right? Traffic lights, pedestrian lights. And it was still very early in the morning. It was like, I don't know. 5.50 maybe, close to 6 a.m. So there weren't any cars, there was no traffic at all. But there was one couple, they were coming towards me, they wanted to cross the streets towards me and I wanted to cross the streets in their direction. But the pedestrian lights were red and obviously we waited, even though there was no car inside, there was no car, like you couldn't even hear a car, you couldn't hear any traffic at all, the city was dead. In Germany, you don't jump the pedestrian lights, you just don't do that. At least not when there are other people. If I was alone, I would have probably just jumped the lights. And if they were alone, they would have probably jumped the lights as well. But when you see someone else observing you, it's like, you, know, you don't want to mm. be the first <laughs> to be the outlaw to that jump the very, lights. So very German. Wait, even though there is no traffic at all. So that's really a big thing in Germany. Whenever you hear, don't jump the lights, people will throw very weird looks at you when you jump the pedestrian lights. Even though there is no car inside, you, you just don't do that. Yeah, Germans are very obedient when it comes to the law. <laughs> so the line Yeah, that's an interesting one because that's actually something I did notice when I went back to Scotland. Here, I don't cross the light unless it's a green man. Not because of the rules, but because the driving here is insane. I just don't want to get run over. When I was in Scotland, I remember waiting at the lights till it turned green and people were just crossing the road while it was red. And I was thinking, oh yeah, I forgot you can actually just basically cross whenever you want. Uh, then started doing that again, of course. Uh, but interesting, yeah, tell me about that. I guess jaywalking is not really an issue in Australia. And yes, yeah, interesting just to see how the German mentality is and they don't, don't want to be the first one to go and break the rules. Quite interesting. I turned green, I crossed the road, they crossed the road, and I was trying to make eye contact because obviously I want to talk to people, I want to say hello, I want to say good morning. So. I desperately try to make eye contact, but they desperately tried not to make eye contact. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a bit weird. I mean, in Australia, yeah, when you're in Sydney and there is millions of people on the streets, you don't say hello to everyone. But um, as I said, it was like six o'clock in the morning. There was like no one else. And I thought that a good morning would have been appropriate. We don't talk to each other really over here. Not that much. <laughs> And that's what I like about Australia, I feel like in that respect Australia is very similar to Scotland, like when I was going into shops, I was really just having conversations with people anytime I'm buying things or whatever, you just have that general chit chat. I think Australians are like that and I definitely prefer uh, having that interaction and just that friendliness. Uh, but yeah, quite stark the difference between Germany and Australia in that, that respect. I went I to a bakery and I got a coffee. and. Boy, I tell you, that was the most devastating thing that I've realized that we do not have good coffee in Germany. We do not have any baristas in Germany. When you go to whatever breakfast place and you order a coffee, there is a coffee machine, there are a few buttons on them, one says cappuccino, one says cafe latte, one says whatever, and you just press the button and the coffee machine just makes the coffee there is no barista. I mean, I have been back for about one and a half months now and I haven't seen a single barista and I bought quite a few coffees because I am a coffee lover. But you would have to go to a coffee dedicated place, like a, a, a coffee shop that sells millions of different of coffee beans and whatever, they would probably have barista made coffee. But anywhere else, and this is probably what I miss about New Zealand and Australia the most at the moment, is great coffee. I finished my coffee, I went out the bakery again. By that time the streets started to get a little bit more crowded and one thing that I've noticed on the streets was that there are so many expensive cars driving on our roads. It felt like every 10th car that I saw was a Porsche, every 5th car that I saw was a brand new BMW, every 3rd car that I saw was a new Mercedes. It's just incredible how much money Germans spend on their cars. 
I mean, yeah, we are a car-making country, and it's kind of obvious that people like cars over here, especially because we have the Autobahn where you can just drive as fast as you want. So yeah, we are a very car-driven culture. <laughs> Was that a good job? Probably not. Doesn't really matter. But I've never noticed that there were so many expensive sports cars on our roads. That was... That was a bit surprising. As I continued my walk through the town, I... So is that not the case in Australia? People just like... Get like more affordable, sensible cars? I know people drive a lot of big pickup trucks here and there, like the utes. Uh, the utility vehicles, the big pickup trucks, but... In general, cars, is it just like normal cars? Do, do you see a lot of like Mercedes, uh, BMWs, expensive cars? I feel actually like here in Malaysia, there's more people with that type of car. Like in my condo, so many BMWs, Mercedes and things. When I go back to the UK, people just drive very sensible cars. You get your Kias, uh, whatever, Fords, all the kind of small, smaller cars. I actually prefer that mentality where people are not spending so much on a like depreciating asset and they just have something that fits you rather than trying to be too showy or anything like that. Came across a phone shop. I felt like, oh yeah, I should probably should get a German SIM card because I just didn't, you know, I didn't have a German phone number at the time. So I went inside, I talked to the guy, I told him what I want, uh, mobile data, whatever. Um, and he did make some sort of mistake. He didn't really know what to do, so he called the customer service hotline for employees and um, ask what we can do about that and they told him as he told me that he would and this is <laughs> I felt like oh yeah I'm back in Germany now he told me that he would have to send these guys a fax do you even know what a fax is <laughs> we were still yeah, using, using fax machines in Germany Whoa. so he would have to send them a fax they would have to sign whatever and send it back via mail like physically and he would uh, whatever it would take a week I and i felt like oh yeah use i'm back in germany i'm back in the country with the worst worst paper driven bureaucracy in the world it was it's like for a sim card of course we didn't do that he just kind of threw that sim card away and just gave me a new one and he did something differently and it worked out in the end ridiculous but yeah that's that's german bureaucracy and it will probably not change in the future so it finally worked out i got my german phone number i walked out of the shop and one thing that i've noticed then i mean i've noticed that all the time already but it was later that day so it was around noon maybe by the time and it is summer here in germany and the funny thing is that when it comes to German weather, the longer I spent my time in Australia and New Zealand, in my memory, Germany has become grayer and grayer and colder and colder. I knew that was not the case, but for some reason, I don't know, that was what my mind was picturing. So when I come back here in summer, it is so incredibly hot. I completely forgot how high the humidity is here in summer. We have like a few days we had like 35 to 37 degrees and it's just so humid. You leave the shower and you become sticky again immediately. If it wasn't for the cold winter that we have we could perfectly grow palm trees or whatever. That was kind of a surprising thing to me as well even though I knew that we would have hot summers but I just forgot about that fact. Especially now that I'm living here as you can probably tell by my slope wall behind me I'm living right under the roof so the heat just really stays in here and it's just super hot. I'm very happy that I have a ceiling fan up there. <laughs> so. At least as long as I'm up here, as long as I'm in my flat, I do not really miss Australian weather because I do really have Australian weather up here, to be honest. And I can't wait to finish the video so that I can get rid of my shirt. <laughs> With that being said, I hope you enjoy watching the video and you've learned something. If that was- That's a cool video, man. Yeah, it's like interesting to see again the differences. Like that's just one day or a couple of days he's describing there. You can really see so many differences in the way of life. Uh, like about the weather when I went back to Scotland it's supposed to be summer it was great it was cold as soon as we stepped off the plane my son was like I need my jumper I need my jumper I need my jumper 
it was like that cold, depressing. That's one thing I'm glad to be back in Malaysia for, just the nice warm humidity, humidity the warm weather, the sun, even though today it's quite dark and rainy. Uh, but yeah, tell me what you think about the things he mentioned in this video. Thanks.